In this video, guys, we're gonna cut tips and tricks with TradingView. Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining me. All right, so tips and tricks with TradingView, super popular charting platform. You can see why. As a free version, which is good for uh, most people who are trading FX only, the pro version is not that much. It's really kind of pretty good when you compare it to other charting platforms out there. They're a couple hundred bucks uh, a month. Now, if you want something really specific and bespoke, and some kind of uh, market depth or some real kind of uh, in-depth analysis on market flow or stuff, then you may well want something premium. But for most traders, guys, who are just doing you know, technical analysis and uh, kind of trading with that methodology, uh, it's going to be absolutely fine. So let's look at some tips and tricks that I've got for you. If you've got any guys, please stick them in the comment section below. It helps me as well. I don't know everything about trading view. I only kind of know my little things that work for me. Of course, there's so many other things that we don't kind of know about. Uh, some of these things I'm going to show you now have been taught by the people um, and it just helps others who stumble across the video. So if you've got any, then let's let make this a nice, decent library of little tips and tricks. So without further ado, uh, let's hit the screens. All right, so I have in front of us a chart. Let's have a look what have I got. I've got a crude oil chart, it's not three minute. Uh, let's zoom in out a little bit to make it a little bit less noisy. Go 15, let's have, let's have a 60 minute. Okay, so we've got a 60 minute chart of crude oil here. Right, so uh, it's worth pointing out that I am on the pro account. So I believe most things will work uh, with the free account, but if they don't, maybe that's why. So just keep an eye out for that. Okay, so. Uh, one of the things you can do, obviously, most people are familiar with all these lines on the left-hand side here, drawing our horizontal lines. Uh, what you can actually do is you can you undo by clicking Control Z. So if you've written something and you've uh, kind of oh I deleted it, I didn't want to do this, I didn't want to go back in time to 15 minutes, you can just undo the last thing. So for example, uh, you might draw something, you might remove it. Ah, I removed it. Control Z or Command Z on a Mac uh, brings it back, which is very handy. You know, if you spend a lot of time annotating something, then all of a sudden you you accidentally remove all with that button. You go, ah, oh, no, you can just bring it all back. So that's a good way of doing it. Uh, another thing, guys, is you can use hide all. So let's say, for example, uh, you've been kind of annotating your charts here, and you've kind of got your lines of support resistance. You know, maybe you've got some boxes. We'll look at these in a second. And you just want to trade price. You just want to look at price, see so what's going on with price. Uh, you can, without deleting them all, you can just hide all the libel down here. Just hides all the drawing tools. So you can just see price, pure price. Because sometimes I know what it's like, guys. We have so many chart, uh, so many lines on our chart. We've got reference points. We've got little markers. Maybe we've got those arrows, etc., etc. Uh, but really, we just want to see what the heck is happening with price. And so it's really useful. Uh, tool that and obviously deleting all with the trash can there and most of you are probably aware as well you we can obviously undo that uh, you can just right click on these individually and remove necessary oh i didn't mean to remove that and we can undo so nice starting point there all right so uh we can obviously as well maybe aware of this maybe or not you can suppress individual indicators so here i've got volume if i don't want to have a cluttered up there i can hit the eyeball on that too handy for moving averages handy for vwaps and stuff like that so you can suppress individual indicators uh, that way uh, zoom most people know scrolling up and down the margin uh, also on the scroll wheel if you're using a mouse handy and if you kind of make a little bit of a mess and want to go back to where you were the auto button down here uh, just puts it back into an automatic uh, zoom and it only does the um, y-axis so if you've shrunken it right down for whatever reason auto will sort it back out for you and then you can use the scroll wheel to bring as many days in or minutes in as you want okay so let's talk about the sync feature uh, again probably aware of this one but i want to show it because i think it's really cool uh if you've got two charts up here i've got them set up so you haven't got the names up but you can obviously go to all the settings we're not going to cover everything today uh, you can sync things like symbol so let's say that's always going to be crude oil or let's say if i change one of them to spy then they're all going to change to spy and I've got up here uh, an hourly chart and a daily chart. So I can very, very quickly just look at an hourly and daily on say the Qs or Euro US dollar or whatever I'm trading. Uh, so I can sync the symbol, sync the crosshair, and that's pretty cool. So let's say I change one to spy. I change that to a daily so that it fits in. As I'm moving this crosshair, you can see it on the bottom, the crosshair's moving. So I can go, oh, what happened here at this low? How do we fare the low on the other chart, the spy down below? Ah, I can see. So I can automatically see what's going on, which is really quite handy. An interval as well. So if I've got charts, let's say I've got a, uh, I'm kind of looking at four charts, similar to what I've got up here on the left-hand side, actually. 
Um, let's say I want to look at a day, I can just punch in the day. If I want to go down to you know, 15 and look at them all at 15, I can just punch in 15 and it's going to show me 15 minutes on all of the charts. So it syncs the time frame on all the charts. And there's other bits and pieces as well on there guys for you to check out. Um, but that's pretty cool, I like, I like that feature. Okay, so the next feature, I don't know how many people would be aware of this, but you can do pretty cool stuff in the formula bar. So I've got SPY in here now. Let's say I wanted to do a pair trade on SPY and QQQ, the ETF of ES and NASDAQ. I could put QQQ and I could put divided by SPY and it would automatically calculate that for me, which I think is pretty cool. So if I wanted to do, um, you know, Apple minus spy for whatever reason. I don't know why you want to do these kind of things, but you can do like, I don't know why you do on a ratio, you know, quite easily do a pair trade. Then you could construct a pair trade over uh, similar asset classes or stocks or whatever. So let's say you did, um, you know, Apple divided by, uh, you know, Tesla, for example, not the greatest pair trade in the world I give you, but you, you can start to see that. So you can start to plot some of these things, uh, which is very nice. You can do things as well, like uh, if you wanted to plot uh, an inverse of SPY, you can do one minus SPY, that gives you an inverse. You could spot, uh, you could plot a, um, another chart that's, I don't know, SPY times two, I don't know why do I want to do that, but you get the point, there's lots of things you can do just in the formula bar, which is quite nice. And while I'm on inverse, uh, shout out to Gary for teaching me, showing me this one, uh, if he's watching. So if you just hit Alt-I, it'll inverse spy for you. So all of a sudden now, we've got an inverse of the chart. So if we look at a daily, uh, you can see. Now why might you want to use that? So let's say you struggle going long, but you're okay going short. Maybe you can kind of flip it and go, well, I don't like really going long, but if I was short, I'd be all over this. Maybe it just helps you be a little bit more neutral. Or maybe you can just prank somebody, just go up to their desk, flip it when they're not looking and see how long it takes them to realize. Uh, hopefully they realize pretty quickly. Okay, so uh, that's that one. Uh, the other one I've got for you guys is the shaded levels. Now I like this one. Obviously we draw our support resistance on, often we're using lines, but very often guys, lines aren't really right. You know, we've got shaded levels like this area here, for example, that's a cluster of levels. A line's not gonna be cut it unless you put loads of lines. So one way of doing it is to go into a drawing tool section and draw a rectangle. I quite like this because sometimes I don't want this going all the way across. I know you can change it, we'll see in a second, but that's quite one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, which actually is pretty recently learned this one, is a parallel channel. So let's say we wanted to have this kind of area here, we draw a line across and then you can draw a channel up and then you can kind of move it around and have the thickness to how you want. So you can have, okay, that's a reasonably thick level here. I'm gonna put that on there. Uh, maybe you, you could clone that if you wanted to and kind of drag that over to uh, like another level, a cluster of level. But you get the idea. You can have it as thin or as thick as you want. So it's quite a nice way, again, of when, you know, trades market doesn't move kind of to a point and reverse instantly. There's these fuzzy zones very often, you know, like we've got down here. Uh, so you could quite easily just, you know, have this cover the whole zone in uh, and then so you're aware of it. And then of course, you know, you can suppress it if you want to or not. So that's a quite a nice way of doing it. Uh, we talked about the reset scale. One final thing I wanna show you guys is the price range tool. You might be aware of this. Many of you are aware of this long position, short position type thing, won't go through that one. Uh, but I quite like this price range function. So you can, you can kind of, let's just flip over to a five minute and reset the scale. So you can uh, kind of decide, uh, plot from high to low and see really what the rotations are, if you like. So high to low, that's like 60 cents. Uh, or maybe let me go to a kind of smaller chart and move this out of the way into the top there. I'm gonna go into one minute. You can start to plot, see the rotations. And I've talked a little bit about this before, where it's very key to know what kind of mode the market's in, uh, where it's going. So, you know, I can start to do things like, all right, so from here to here, it was 60 cents, right? I can then just drag it and go, well, 60 cents, okay, from, from that low to the high, that's about 60 cents. And I can start to extrapolate things a little bit. You know, maybe I can just sort of see the frame and reference of the market. So from here to here, you know, whatever that is, 20, uh, 25 cents. All right, where's 25 cents move? Okay, well, you know, we've kind of had a 30 cent move from here to here. Um, it, it just helps you reference and frame the moves a little bit better just by using this price range. Sure, you can just kind of do it manually and count, but often this is a visual thing, and the fact that you can drag it means that very often you can just kind of drag the bar, or drag the range bar along, and, and kind of see how it fits in with the rest of the day and how it fits in with other ranges. So it's quite a nice little tool, that guy, something that I don't think a lot of people use, but I use it uh, quite a lot.
So if you've got any extras you want to add, then please stick them in the comment section below. Uh, it's going to help others who've stumbled across the video. It helps me as well. Uh, but I think TradingView is a pretty decent platform. Take care. Bye-bye.